I worked at Liberty University for almost three years. I worked in the Office of Student Conduct. I had three or four male coworkers and three or four female coworkers. We were all student conduct officers and worked with all sorts of cases on campus involving campus police, different violations, things like that. I was so thrilled to get a position like this in a Christian school. My background is criminal justice, so to be able to combine the two was a gift. I was under the supervision of Keith Anderson. He was the senior conduct officer. We'll call this woman Jennifer. Jennifer was a Liberty employee from 2009 to 2011, and her boss was a man named Keith Anderson. According to his LinkedIn page, Keith Anderson was the Dean of Students at Liberty from 2007 to 2014, which meant that the Office of Student Conduct, also known as the Office of Community Life, reported to him. Liberty's website says this office handles things such as conflict resolution and student discipline. A student was brought to my attention who had been raped by multiple male athletes. She was afraid that because she had been drinking, she would be in trouble. But I saw the bigger issue as being raped. The alcohol to me was irrelevant. When I brought it to Keith's attention, he said they denied it. They said they didn't do it. I wasn't even asked to investigate any further. And I just remember being shocked. The bigger problem for Jennifer, as it turned out, was the behavior of her boss, Keith Anderson who she says began targeting her in the office. I was selected to run the sexual purity campaign, and I was told it was so that I would become more comfortable talking about that issue, which is deeply personal, and I don't need a supervisor helping me become comfortable talking about that. But it just kind of became like a joke. And when I said I was uncomfortable, I was told, well, you need to get comfortable with that topic. And from there, it just, there was just so many little moments that Keith would make innuendos to me. So much so that one of the men from the department, they were having a prayer meeting one morning and they actually came and told me that they prayed for me because they saw that Keith was targeting me, just kind of picking at me, making comments to me, and they didn't understand. Jennifer says Keith Anderson's sexual comments escalated and made her feel uncomfortable enough to report them. I did report many of these instances to my immediate supervisor. She had also heard some of the comments and said they were inappropriate. I don't recall if I reported everything in detail due to fear of losing my job because I was afraid and didn't speak up as much as I should have. I feared that it would turn into something physical or some sort of advance. I feared being alone in the building with him or without someone else in the room with me. And so it just created a daily fear. Jennifer was never contacted by Human Resources regarding her complaint, and she resigned from Liberty in October of 2011. Three people who worked alongside Jennifer corroborated her story and the hostile work environment they each endured under Keith Anderson. And yet another employee of Keith Anderson after resigning from his position on April 19th, 2012, referenced Anderson and sexual harassment in an email to Jerry Falwell Jr. He also copied Neil Askew, an executive vice president at the time. Gangster capitalism obtained the email. Jerry, the reason which led to my departure was that I could not work any longer for Keith Anderson. There's a reason 13 or 14 people have left the Dean of Students office in one year. In the past year, two of the female employees in the office told me that Keith had made comments of a sexually inappropriate nature to them. These and other incidents I shared with Mrs. Wallace in regard to why I could never work for this man again. My concern with this man is if he continues where he's at, someday it will come back to haunt the university in a very bad way. Neil Askew responded to this email saying that he'd look into the situation. But two weeks prior to this email, 
Jennifer, already gone six months, had emailed the Executive Vice President of Human Resources, Laura Wallace. Here, Jennifer reads part of her email. Good morning, Mrs. Wallace. My supervisor created a very uncomfortable work environment for me with his sexual innuendos and remarks. After much prayer and thought, I would like to speak with you about these incidents. May I please schedule an appointment with you? Thank you for your time and consideration. For the second time, Jennifer received no response from Laura Wallace or anybody in the HR department. Perhaps the reason for that is that Laura Wallace, Liberty's Executive Vice President of Human Resources, is Jerry Falwell Jr.'s first cousin. Let that sink in a second. The head of Human Resources is Jerry Falwell Jr.'s first cousin. We asked Liberty how they can justify that there is no conflict or fundamental issue with placing and keeping Laura Wallace, Falwell Jr.'s first cousin, in the critical position of EVP of Human Resources. We received no response. In a written response to the same question, Becky Falwell answered on Jerry's behalf that Laura Wallace started at Liberty before his time as president. Laura Wallace did not respond to our inquiry. 